Well, here at the inaugural Morgan Stanley Australia Summit here in Sydney at the Four Seasons, speaking exclusively to Atlassian's co-founder and co-CEO, Mike Cannonbrooks, joining us here. Great to have you. Thanks for having me. You've been particularly vocal uh, and quite public about your opinions when it comes to climate change and some of the pub public policy aspects of the government and, and their track record here. How did you feel when the coalition was returned to government and how does that inform your prospects, I guess, for efforts to combat climate change in Australia? Um, look, I still feel the same way about Australia and having to do our part in terms of combating climate change uh, and the positive role that new energy technologies can have in our economy. Um, I got asked a question about it inside. I think we don't um, realise how much energy we could be exporting. I, I think it'll be up to corporations, uh, up to individuals to do that. They're voting with their feet uh, at the moment for the next few years. And um, look, I think it'll continue to power along. It'll just be a different part. When it comes to the theme of, of the Morgan Stanley Summit this year, it's, it's uh, you know talking about disruption and looking for that next sustainable driver for Australian growth and moving away clearly from the classic mining boom and, and trade reliant model. Is it difficult though, because you've said, you've been pretty critical about the government not providing the sort of policy platform to encourage innovation. Is that still the status quo or do you see that changing? Uh, on the innovation side of things? Look, I think Australians are going to innovate. We're innovative people. Uh, I think there are certainly things the government could be doing to help. Um, you know, sort of the, if you look at the last three or four years on R&D, you know, concessions, for example, that's, that's critical to the startup industry and getting those smaller companies started and going. Um, that, that certainly hasn't helped. Uh, but at the same time, we do have a, a booming tech industry here and it's going really well, almost irregardless of what, uh, of what the government does, which is, which is great. So they could, they could certainly help a lot more than they are. Um, but I think we've got a pretty rosy future anyway. I was looking at your Twitter uh, feed earlier and, and just you know, encapsulating how far Atlassian has come in 15 years, that the pictures of your attendance at the first and <laughs> most recent Apple Worldwide Developers That's Conference, right. it's incredible. How does that play into your activism? Does it kind of hinder it? Does it, it obviously gives you more of a profile to be able to address the issues that are important to you? Um, I mean, look, it's, 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 uh, it's a blessing and a curse to have that, that profile sometimes, for sure, but we, we try to use it for positive things and advocating for, for the changes that we think uh, are there um, to, to be made, and that's what I think you know, more business leaders in Australia should do. And part of that is obviously investing in the right companies and, and the right acquisitions. As a $30 billion company, I mean, that op opens up greater opportunities than some of the acquisition targets that you've had available to you in the past? Uh, sure. I mean, it would conceptually give us a lot of, uh, uh, of firepower to do that. Uh, but at the same time, we've always been very capital efficient, right? We, we didn't, you know, we, we bootstrapped our way to an IPO, right? That was the first institutional capital we put on the balance sheet. So we're highly capital, capital conscious. Uh, and, you know, the two largest shareholders are, are making you know, shareholder relevant decisions uh, every day and we try to focus on the long term uh, and, and not, you know, not focus on, on the things that we could do as much as the right things to do. With these concerns over data and privacy, national security, the US ban on Huawei and how that's having, you know, a real reverberation across other countries and, and their telecom policies, tech is really the new battleground for trade, right? So how does that potentially, you know, I'm curious to get your views, are we setting up for two distinct spaces when it comes to tech, with, you know, the Western world versus China? How do you kind of make sense of that dynamic? Um, look, I think it's going to be really interesting, let's put it that way, it's not going to be a boring world uh, uh, on that, on, on that uh, aspect. Um, from, from an Atlassian point of view, look, we're, we're you know, we ride the global macro trends up and down like anyone else is going to. Um, we're a little counter-cyclical in the way that we have uh, many, many smaller customers. So that you know naturally gives us a little bit of a hedge. But um, you know we don't you know participate in trade wars or anything else. It doesn't really affect our, our, our software that we that we sell and, and, and selling it globally. Um, I think tech in general, for sure, privacy uh, and, and a lot of other concerns are becoming bigger and bigger issues. I think as they should from a consumer point of view. Um, and that's something that we're all just going to have to get used to and, and deal with, right? What about the Chinese market? Because I know you've joined the Australia Nash Nation Brand Advisory Council with this initiative to try and sell, uh, you know, in a more coherent, I think, branding way, Australian brands and, and products and services to China. Is there a concern that the trade war is going to end up with companies like yours being caught in the crosshairs and, and being shut out of that market? Um, look, again, you'd have to ask... Uh, 
better economic minds than mine. Uh, certainly the national brand is a really, really important initiative. Um, we've never had a national brand. Um, and when it comes to products and services we're trying to sell in China, but, but all over the world, in Europe, in Africa, and other places, um, I think you know, branding is really important and Australia has a lot of phenomenal brand assets. Uh, but we do need to move beyond sort of, you know, beaches and bikinis and barbecues and things as a brand.